Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you how to write a baseline in Ableton Live. Even if you've never written a baseline in Ableton yet, after watching this video you're gonna be able to do that easily. And we're not going to be making just any baseline, you'll recreate one of the most popular baselines of recent years from the track Losing It by Fisher. It's really really simple, we're going to pick an instrument, write the MIDI pattern, design the synth patch and put some effects on top of it. Then we will create another layer which is going to make the pattern sound really hypnotic. Before we get into the video though, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe, we've got more Ableton tutorials coming up, and if you'd like to learn Ableton Live with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Alright, so let's get started. Let's listen to the loop that we're going to be making. So first of all, these two audio tracks are loops. We have a top loop. You can find many, many more like this in our sample packs. And we have a kick loop. Very simple kick drum. And then what we're going to be making are these two blue MIDI patterns with instruments. The first one, uh, this MIDI pattern has the instrument, the analog instrument assigned to it. So let's uh, listen to that layer. And then we have another layer, the hypnotic bass layer, which has a wavetable on it. And let's listen to that one. So we kind of have two basses, but they complement each other and they sound really good together. But first of all, I'm going to hide these two tracks. I'm going to copy these two sample layers and let's just focus on this. We're going to be starting with right clicking in this gray area here, selecting insert MIDI track and I will select four bars here like this, right click in this area and select insert empty MIDI clip. So we have a MIDI clip, but there is no instrument playing. We need to pick an instrument first. Let's open up the browser. Just click this button over here and you can go to all and just type in analog. And this instrument is what we're going to be using. So we can just drop it right onto the MIDI track name or here into the drop an instrument or sample here area. I'm going to fold the browser. By the way, if you're new to Ableton, you can scroll here in this area where your mouse turns into a a magnifying glass. So now we should probably check what this device sounds like by default. If you have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, you can just arm the track clicking this button if it's red and we can play around. Or if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can press this button right here and this enables your built-in computer keyboard to act like a MIDI keyboard. And you can just press some keys from A to L on your keyboard. Okay, so here's the A key. It's not that pleasant, but we'll fix it in a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at analog, the different sections of this instrument. We have two paths, so to speak. Let's just disable the second one. So this oscillator two button, we're just going to turn it off. So all we're going to use here is this one oscillator. So a sound generator, which is going through a filter, which is turning down the high frequencies for us and into an amplifier, which basically determines how loud the sound is playing. To start with, we are going to change the shape of our first oscillator into a square wave. This is a saw wave, it's in the shape of a saw. We want to change it into a square. It's going to sound like this. Make sure you are on the right tab here because you can toggle between the different sections by pressing on the gray area in this section. Make sure the width parameter here is at 100% because this is going to change the timbre. Right? Before and after. We can go down a few octaves to play some bass notes to hear what it sounds like in the bass registers. And to do that, if you have a MIDI keyboard, then you can just use your MIDI keyboard. If we are using our computer keyboard, then you can toggle between different octaves using Z and X. Z goes down and X goes an octave higher. So if you press Z twice, this is the A key now. Okay, so we already have a sort of bass note going on. Now, what I would like to start with is just turning down this frequency knob and this is going to muffle our sound a bit. Let's go to 275. You can also type this in after you click on it. This already could be a bass sound, so maybe we can just double click on the MIDI pattern, write our pattern and then we'll tweak it. Let's maybe work on this short fragment. So I'm just selecting this fragment, pressing Ctrl and L, or you can also press this button right here to loop it. 
And I can also split our MIDI clip by selecting this area here and pressing Ctrl and E. And now if we select this part, we will just have these four bars uh, in our MIDI editor. Because pretty much the bass line is repeating, which can just copy it over and over. The song is in the key of G, so maybe we can go to G0 and double click on the note. If you right click on this area here, you can also choose the grid. So make sure you have chosen 16th notes. We can extend this note like this. Then let's add another note here. Let's listen to it quickly. This sounds okay. We can copy this note, for example, Ctrl C or Command C on Mac, and we can paste it here. We can do the same thing here, but we are going to go one semitone up. Now let's do this once again here and extend the note a bit. And we are copying this note in the exact same position. So we have sort of an A pattern and a B pattern. And now what we can do is just select this pattern here, press Ctrl or Command on Mac and D four times, and we have it. If you want this to be in a single MIDI clip, you can just highlight this entire area, right click, consolidate. And if we double click, now it's a single MIDI clip. So now let's open up the track and work on the sound. We're just going to add a bit of resonance. And we're going to turn down this envelope to one and a half, and let's lower the sustain all the way. So we have really muffled the sound. We've taken the top end off of the sound. Just a quick disclaimer, if you are not hearing the bass line very well, make sure you are listening on good headphones or good speakers with a subwoofer. There is one thing we can add on top of this bass line to make it groove a bit better, and that's sidechain compression. So we can search for compressor, just drop the regular compressor here. What compressors do is they manage the gain of your sound. So they're like a volume knob, which is automated. And we want to tell the compressor in this case to duck the sound whenever the kick hits. So maybe when you have the compressor by default, it looks like this. You can go into this view to make it more visual, clicking this button right here. And you can expand the sidechain view, turn on sidechain, go to audio from and select, for example, our K track is our kick. So now let's play it once again. And you can see that whenever the kick hits, it's displayed over here. If we now turn down the threshold, it's going to start ducking. I think that is enough. You can play around with the threshold, the ratio, but for starters, you should be fine with just adjusting the threshold. And it already should flow much better with the track. Uh, we have the first bass track, but let's add another layer, and this is going to be our hypnotic awesome layer. Let's right click into empty MIDI space, go to insert MIDI track. In this case, we're going to be using Wavetable. Let's go into Wavetable. I'm just searching for it here in this top bar. I'm just dropping Wavetable onto this track, closing the browser, and in Wavetable, uh, we can actually preview it just like analog. So. This is what it sounds like. Now let's change the shape here into the saw. So what we have are sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, and square wave. Let's stick with the saw wave. So this is our first saw wave. And let's go into the second tab here, turn this on, and let's also choose the saw wave. And we have two saw waves playing at the same time, but the second saw wave we are going to pitch up by 12 semitones or just an octave. So we're going to have two octaves of saw waves. So 12 semitones up and we have a stack of saw waves. It sounds a bit, it already sounds a bit more powerful. What we're going to do is changing the unison mode into classic. And this is already going to give us a much bigger sound. We're going to crank the voices and spread out the voices even more to almost 60%. Let's shape the sound with the filter. Let's turn down this frequency knob and we will muffle the sound just like with analog. Let's change the filter type to 24 dB. That just gives us a different curve of the filter. Let's stick with 129 and we are going to use an envelope 
to move this frequency knob for us. Just like it did in analog, but here we have to assign it. So let's go into the matrix tab and assign envelope two to this frequency knob. So we are going to click on the frequency knob and under envelope two, we're going to increase this value and we'll increase it to 56. You can just also click on it and type in 56. Sounds like this now. And we will shape it. Let's add a 100 millisecond attack and let's type in 430 milliseconds of decay and no sustain. Let's also shape our amp envelope here, which affects how loud the sound is over time. Let's give it also 88 milliseconds of attack. Let's give it 280 milliseconds of decay and no sustain. Sounds like this now. Okay, so now I think we are ready to write a MIDI pattern. Let's select maybe just this area and insert an empty MIDI clip. Let's add the first note just like it was with the first pattern. We're going to add a bit of a different rhythm. Uh, let's extend the first note a bit longer. Let's copy it and let's add two shorter notes here like this and let's hear it. We can take this pattern and hold control and move it this way. So we duplicate it or do the same thing as we did with analog, just duplicating this clip, command or control and D, selecting everything and right clicking, consolidate. Let's hear what we have. I think we need some kind of color and response thing going on here. And these first three repeats are fine, but here I want to add something else. So maybe just let's make this note two sixteenth notes duplicate it and the last note let's go to G sharp and I'll copy this pattern and put it at the end as well and delete this missing note. So let's hear it once again. So we sort of have a call and response. This would be our call. And here we have a response towards the end of the bar. Okay, so let's hear everything together now. You probably hear that something's slightly off. First of all, we have quite a long attack on this second sound. That means that it takes up to 88 or maybe 100 milliseconds for the sound to appear. That basically means that our bass line comes much later than this one. That's why you might feel that it's not really in time and sync with all the rest. Right, and there's a really nice fix here. Go to view, go to arrangement track controls and make sure track options are turned on. Now I turned it off, I'll turn it back on. And now what appears is the latest latency fader. We can basically use this latency fader to move our track a bit back in time so we can compensate for the long attack. Let's go to minus 63 and let's hear what it sounds like now. And to me that's much much better. So one other thing we can do is just copy the compressor from the analog track. And this also makes the track duck whenever the kick hits. One other thing is that we have two bass sounds pretty much playing right now, which are a bit clashing. So we can use EQ to clean out the low frequencies on this higher sounding bass. So I'm just searching for EQ8, dropping it on the track. I will move it before the compressor and I will cut a bit. To do that, I'm going to select this curve here and I'm going to cut a bit of the lows. Let's listen to it in solo. So I'm going to be cutting around 135 hertz. Some additional effects we could use is reverb on this to put it in a small space. I'm just going to turn down the size and decay and just add a touch of it. It's a very subtle difference. And uh, maybe we can also take OTT, which is also a very popular effect, put it on top of it, but just make sure to adjust the amount knob because it's going to sound crazy by default. You can just mix it in around 30%. Now let's play everything together and maybe adjust some levels.
Okay, I believe we have it. I hope that after today's video, you're able to confidently write your own bass patterns in Ableton. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres, as well as the beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course, which gives you all the knowledge you need to get started with music production. All links you will find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment, and I will see you in the next videos.